are you going to believe? The scripture you're reading or these men who want to give you that free hall pass that says the principal will not bust you. <laughs> I'm going to believe in scripture. And these people talk about me like I'm as though, and Matthias, you can, you can uh, attest to this, as though I am teaching or believing some doctrine which is so ludicrous. Look at Drew Bloom. He's an absolute maniac. He is way out there. I put this right next to a still small voice meeting Jesus in a tuxedo. That's crazy. It's, it's just, this is scripture. Absolute craziness, man. I can't believe. We continue in that 2 Peter 2, verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of, white, the way of righteousness than after they've known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. You can't discern that this is a statement about people who have fallen away from Christ, who have walked away from Christ. And as Peter describes it, it would have been better for them not to have ever known the way of righteousness. For now they are going to get it. Verse 22, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. Do you, understand? Do you see what that, this is Peter saying it. And again, the panel of the judges who say, he's saved, he's not. He's saved, no, you're not. He teaches that you can lose your salvation. No, bro, the Bible does. Dispute this. This is Peter talking. Here he says, but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned unto his vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Again, I'm going to believe the scripture. I'm going to believe the Holy Bible. We're not even close to being done yet. Told you a lot of scripture. In the same book, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, be aware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. How is that possible, Peter? I think we ought to do an expose on Peter. What do you guys think? The apostle Peter exposed. He's teaching heresy. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm going to believe Jesus. Let me read that again. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware. Understand, this is a warning. So, will be led away with the error of the wicked from your own steadfastness. Steadfastness is right now he's talking about, right now they're in a good spot. They're living for the Lord. They're being obedient. They're loving their God. He's warning them, be careful. You also could be led away with error. And you could fall from your own steadfastness. If you can discern that in another way, if you, if you think you can, then you, you truly are a heretic because um, you're teaching something that's false. You're teaching men that they're saved forever and that they can never do anything to lose their, when you're reading scripture after scripture that tells you that you are wrong according to the word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. This is Peter. I protest your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. This is Paul. Why is he, die why is he dying daily? I would like to know that. Why is Paul dying daily? Why is Paul, as we're going to find out soon, working out his salvation with fear and trembling? I would like to know this. A lot of men out there that think they're smart, that they know more than scripture. But he, um, oops, hold on. I went a little bit too far. Let me back up. Let me get another sip of water here, guys. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. There's that warning again. Be not deceived. How can 
once saved, always saved people. How, if they're saved, how can they be deceived? And, or why would it matter? Why would, why would Paul care if they're deceived? They're saved forever. But here he goes on. He says, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. These are all specific labels here. These are very specific types of sin that he's naming. And he continues, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, he just listed off several different labels of sin. So how is that possible? Are you not saved? Are you saved? See, see the confusion you're teaching? See, this proves that salvation is not a lock. And as we go, well, you'll continue to see that. But here it says that fornicators, nor idolaters, nor idolaters, nor the effeminate abusers of themselves of mankind, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're telling somebody that, don't worry, you're saved. You're saved. You believe your simple, easy believism, you're saved. And so, yeah, go ahead. You can go get drunk every single weekend. You can go to your orgies, have premarital sex, have an adulterous affair. Um, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, I know you said you have all homosexual tendencies. Don't worry about it. You're saved. Go ahead and act on those sins. It doesn't matter because you're saved. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible, with giving no specificity to any type of person, simply says, with no prejudice, that fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, abusers of themselves, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, or extortioners shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Take it for what it's worth. Scripture is very clear. You cannot twist it. Now we move on to the book of John, chapter 8, verse 31. And listen to what Jesus himself says. Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, okay? This is, this is another, this one's another mic drop, okay? Where they drop the mic, okay? I, I get it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not hip. So I probably shouldn't be saying that. But then Jesus said to the Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. What do you mean continue? Thought I just had to believe on him one time and then I'd have it locked in for my entire life. A free pass to do whatever I want. I believed on Christ, therefore I'm locked in. My salvation cannot be taken away from me. But Jesus says, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples. Is it safe to say that the other way applies? But if you don't continue in my word, then you are not my disciples. Does that make sense? And the answer is yes, it makes perfect sense. For if it didn't work out like that, then why would he say it? Jesus says you must continue in his word if you want to be called a disciple indeed. So now we're going to get in the same book, John. We're going to jump to chapter 15, and we're going to start in verse 1. So I've got a couple of verses here. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not the fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, I'm sorry, purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you in me. Abide in you. You remember what the word abide means. It means to remain and continue. So he says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. There's abide again. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Three times he said abide. Verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. 
Verse 7, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Verse 8, herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. And as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Continue you ye in my love. So there is abide about 500 times. Just, and then in the end he says, continue in my love. Continue. It's a continue. Remember when Paul talks about it being a race? Again, in the Bible, the men who preach and teach once saved, always saved, do not like that. They love the once saved, always saved doctrine. But as you're reading scripture after scripture after scripture about abiding, overcoming, running the race, staying in the faith, we have still a little bit more to go here. Romans 11.20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Now, again, he's, this is in Romans 11.20. He's talking about the branches. Because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. Now, according to once saved, always saved, why would you fear? You're saved. There's no reason for fear. Verse 21, for if God spared not the natural branches, branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Right? Lest he also spare not thee? Well, I thought I was saved forever. But here, this is a warning. He did not spare the natural branches. And if you get high-minded, you better take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Verse 22, behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell. Severity. But toward thee, goodness, if thou, listen, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Another mic drop. If thou continue in his goodness, and it literally says, Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. You men who argue this, it's ridiculous. You stand against Christ. You are doing a tremendous amount of damage to people who think they now have a past to just go out and sin. They're saved. But here, again, Holy Spirit breathed scripture tells you point blank. If thou continue in his goodness, but otherwise thou shalt be cut off. Unbelievable. What damage you're doing. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye have also received, and wherein you currently stand. I threw currently in there, but I'm, to get my point across, 